What's up, folks? It's your buddy Fatal Rody. Tonight we're going to be doing a Raw recap. We started off with a recap of last week with Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe. We then have Kurt Angle coming out to the ring. He's getting ready to announce Roman Reigns' opponent for the Intercontinental Belt. When Jason Jordan comes out to booze from the crowd, Jason Jordan says that he wants Roman Reigns and then pulls out the dad card again. Roman Reigns comes out, tells Kurt Angle that he wants Samoa Joe, then tells Jason Jordan if he wants a shot, he's going to have to take it. Jason Jordan then goes on to say that Roman Reigns is the WWE poster boy. Then Samoa Joe comes out and says that his patience is being worn thin. So is mine for the rest of this shit. Samoa Joe then accepts Roman Reigns' challenge. Jason Jordan starts talking on the microphone and immediately gets booed by the crowd. He then challenges Samoa Joe. Roman Reigns tells him to stay in his own lane, to which Jason Jordan suplexes Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, pissed off, tells Kurt Angle that he wants Jason Jordan right now. This intro went way too long. It probably could have been cut a little short, getting a little tired, as with all the crowd was, with Jason Jordan. They just need to turn him heel and just be done with it. We then have our first match, Roman Reigns versus Jason Jordan. Samoa Joe is sitting at the top of the ramp in a chair. Roman Reigns pounds Jason Jordan at the beginning part of the match, both in and out of the ring. Jason Jordan comes back, driving Roman Reigns into the turnbuckles back and forth multiple times. Roman Reigns tries to go for a Superman punch. Jason Jordan counters it with a drop kick, goes for a pin, gets a two count. Later on, Roman Reigns knocks Jason Jordan out of the ring. He jumps off of the steps to do a Superman punch. Jason Jordan catches him midair and drives him back first into the ring post. Jason Jordan gets Roman Reigns back into the ring, goes for a pin, again gets a two count. After a commercial break, Roman Reigns has Jason Jordan in a half crab, working on his bad knee. Reigns then goes for a spear, Jason Jordan counters it into a northern light suplex, tries to go for a pin, gets a two count. Roman Reigns was finally able to get a superman punch, then a spear, gets the pin for the win. After the match, Samoa Joe comes in, gets a coquina clutch on Roman Reigns. Jason Jordan comes in and suplexes Samoa Joe. And then Jason Jordan gets another Superman punch from Roman Reigns for helping. This was an eh, it was an alright match. It wasn't too great. As an opening match, it was pretty good. But altogether, it wasn't all that great. It just drug on way too long. This match really should have been half the time that it took. But like I said, it was eh, it wasn't all that great. We then have Sasha Banks versus Paige. There was a lot of back and forth between Paige and Banks throughout this whole match. Mickey James, Bailey, Mandy Rose, and Sonya Deville started fighting out at ringside, which distracted Sasha Banks and allowed Paige to get the rampage for the win. This is a pretty good match. I mean, it wasn't spectacular, but it was pretty good. I'd be interested to see how they're going with this whole absolution line. They pretty much tore through everybody in the women's division. They have yet to have an encounter with Nia Jax, which would probably be pretty interesting to see how that's going to go about. We then have yet another Braun Strowman and Kane recap. We've only seen this going on for 5,682 times. It seems like every time Michael Cole says, let's take you back to, it's pretty much going to be enough time to get yourself a cold drink, run to the bathroom. By the time you're done, we're back from commercial and we're at the next match. This is ridiculous. I'm tired of half of these recaps. They take way too much time and show us everything that we've pretty much seen. We then come to cruiserweight action, Fatal 4-Way, Cedric Alexander, Mustafa Ali, Drew Gulak, and Tony Nese. This is an alright match, it really wasn't a whole lot to watch. The only saving grace to this match was there was a whole bunch of flippy shit that I kind of like the cruiserweights doing. As I've said before, WWE tends to ground a lot of the cruiserweights and the flippy shit is basically what they're known for. But yet again, this is another match to drug on way too long. Drew Gulak got the pin, so he'll be facing Rich Swan next week for a match for the Cruiserweight title. I'm pretty much going to go on a limb and say Rich Swan is probably going to win it, being the fact that Enzo Amore is a heel. WWE tends to not put heels versus heels or face versus face. I don't know why. It'd be interesting to see these type of matches from time to time. During an earlier backstage bit, Elias Sampson was running down Kurt Angle, saying he had no competition, insulted Angle, then Angle said, well, you go on out and have your concert, and I'll find you some suitable competition. So you have Elias Sampson out in the ring, playing the guitar, wasting time, running down the crowd, then Braun Strowman's music hits. He comes out, Elias Sampson looks like he just shit himself. The match was never really officially started, but Braun Strowman beat the hell out of Elias Sampson. Outside of the ring, Elias Sampson smacked Braun Strowman with a guitar. He totally no-sold it. He gets Elias Sampson back in the ring, power slams him, 
throws the ring steps back into the ring, and Kane's music hits. He shows up on the Titantron, and he challenges Braun Strowman next week to a match. What? Why are we doing this? This is basically Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt all over again. We need to just stop this. Kane's old. I mean, it's good to see him in the matches every once in a while, bring him in for special occasions, but this is ridiculous because Kane's a monster and Braun Strowman's a monster. So we just put these two together. Why? It's no. Nope. No. God, no. Please, no. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. No. We then have Asuka versus Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox was on offense early in this match, but she got a little cocky, started slapping Asuka around. Asuka turned it around real quick, got her into the submission, and won. After the match, Absolution comes out, they surround the ring, and once again, they let Asuka walk away. Paige comes into the ring, says that I like you, but Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville don't. So they get in the ring and beat the hell out of Alicia Fox. There's a little bit of speculation being that Asuka is going to be the fourth member of Absolution. I guess we'll have to see if that goes on. We then have Finn Balor versus Bo Dallas. There was a lot of back and forth right at the start. Balor goes up to the top rope, gets distracted by Curtis Axel, which allowed Bo Dallas to knock him down and take over. Balor was able to fight back, got the dropkick into the corner, set him up for the coup de grace, and got the pin. We then have a video package with flashy shit Mick says nothing, and it's interlaced with Broken slash Woken, I'm not sure exactly what he's calling himself, Matt Hardy. It was kind of hard to follow this, being that they were switching back and forth, back and forth between what they were saying, basically skipped it, but it was interesting to see Matt Hardy bringing back his Broken slash Woken, like I said, I don't know which one it is, persona. We then come to our main event, The Bar versus The Shield. Cesaro and Sheamus had the offense through most of this match, beating down on Seth Rollins. Dean Ambrose was finally able to tag in, started beating down on both Sheamus and Cesaro. Rollins tags back in, starts beating down on Cesaro, but Sheamus came in, started stomping on Rollins, and got himself disqualified. As the bar started walking up the ramps, holding the belts, because you can only win the titles through pinfall and submission, Kurt Angle comes out and says he's restarting the match and making it a no-DQ match. After that, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins take it to the bar, start beating up on him, then Samoa Joe comes out and attacks Rollins and Ambrose. Roman Reigns comes out and chases off Samoa Joe. Sheamus got the brogue kick on Dean Ambrose and gets the pin. So Sheamus and Cesaro are still the tag champions. Both The Bar and Samoa Joe walk up through the crowd and so ends this episode of Raw. What can I say about tonight's Raw? Oh my god, it was drawn out. Bruh. A lot of these matches took way too long. Some of them were painful to watch, albeit they were good just too long they were still able to squeeze in six matches which is usually their normal setup but for as long as they let some of them go like the jordan reigns match and the fatal four-way they probably could have cut both of those in half and gotten at least one more match in not to mention if you cut out all the recaps that we keep getting but it was eh, slightly below average which seems to be a common thing for raw That'll do it for this episode of Raw Recap. I'll be back tomorrow for the SmackDown review. Leave a comment down below what you thought of tonight's Raw, what you thought of this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I've been Fatal Roadie. You've been awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, it's too loud, you're too old. See ya.